Hey Libra, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings. So we take what works, we leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And if I don't catch your storyline or wavelength on this one, uh, go check your other major placements. They're actually pretty interesting, I I think. I thought that was just kind of weird. People are like, check. Yeah, well, I guess if I watch all your videos, I'll find something that resonates. But the truth is, it it ha it does. I don't get it, but they are they are just as accurate or more so sometimes. So, also, I've been uh, leaving po photos of the spread at the end of the video for those of you that like to follow along, um, check my work, that kind of thing just get a better glimpse so some of these cards are so beautiful and if they really resonate with you I can see why you'd want to like all right that's a lot hmm. surprising stuff for Libra here how do these want to go I think we're just gonna do this this way We've got Red Garden. You've changed in very obvious ways and not so obvious ways. Um, you are looking at the past. There's some sort of past situation that you're looking at. You might be seeing it fairly inaccurately, um, but uh, you are, uh, there's something about how you're seeing it that isn't quite right. It's not quite the way, um, it's not quite the healthiest way or or the best way to be looking at something. And we do have a lot of power and control over that. Your heart's ready to move to the future. Heart's moving on. Uh, your your vision, your mind might still be a little bit in the past. And I'm gonna, this one leads us straight to this one. Um, all is connected. So this is my Anansi, the spider storyteller card. And this is about how it's all connected and how we talk about our lives and talk about things um, is a way of pulling on that fabric. And every time we pull up a memory or something like that, our mind fiddles with it a little bit. And um, whatever mood we're in or whatever feeling we're in, it, we can, and if we're not careful, like tilt the memory, turn the memory a little bit. Um, and so I may have talked about this with you guys in the past about uh, a memory I had of dumping someone on Valentine's Day. Well, I recently moved, had to go through all my stuff, found some journals. Um, I never, it was a week after Valentine's Day or days after Valentine's Day. It was after that was all done. I wouldn't, you know, and, and I had had this perception. So there's some sort of inaccurate thing from your past that's, that's coloring uh, what you're thinking about. Uh, you need to change how you're talking about that thing and how you how you interact with that memory. And it has some sort of very subtle effect. You think you're just pulling on how you interact with that memory, how you um, deal with that. Uh, and what it is doing, in fact, is, is changing everything. You're pulling on one thread on the fabric of, of your reality, and it's actually pulling on all of the threads and changing it. So I think this is a good thing, though, because you're not seeing very accurately in the past. Your heart would like to move forward. Uh, you're, and you need to just change one thing. Um, it could be, you know, uh, a blame um, or, or you know, maybe you think somebody's at fault or somebody's wrong, but it's just the way it is. It's just it, nobody's at fault, nobody's wrong. Everybody here is doing their best. And um, and if you saw that, if you could feel that, that might actually change how you interact with all the situations in your life. You might be less fearful or less afraid or less worried that um, people are gonna are are trying to hurt you or something like that. It could be something like that where you just need to. To, and this doesn't mean that you know we give people four thousand chances um, or or pretend they didn't do what they did because some people do have bad motivations. But maybe but there's something here that you're just not seeing very clearly. And I think that if you if you change the way you see it and the change the way you view it, um, you're gonna get this forward motion that your heart's ready to do, and you're gonna be able to let go of something from the past. Um, I want to go to this card next can you hear me there's been uh, virgo just got this card there's been some sort of communication frustration uh not being able to communicate not feeling um heard not feeling uh like you've been able to communicate some sort of deep deep emotional truths about yourself you've wanted to do this 
um, and it hasn't been working and it hasn't been working out. And it's either communication is a two way street, right? It takes two to tango, two to make this beautiful dance between two people and one person only needs one person to fuck it up. One person who's not listening, one person who can't hear you, one person who doesn't want to communicate. So there's some sort of communication issue. Somebody here, it could be you or somebody else getting frustrated and not feeling heard, not feeling like they can communicate anymore. I mean, is she just like, I don't even have the breath to, to blow my little conch horn here? Or is she like, okay, I've blown this enough and how come I'm not hearing anything back? Um, so it could be on either end of the communication situation, but there is some sort of exhausted communication and it's, it's just worn out and there's not anything anybody can do about it. You just feel like you're not going to be able to do that. And I th think that that has to do with this... Um, how we're viewing something. You may be viewing someone as refusing to communicate um, or refusing to, to do something when in fact it's just the nature of the situation. Um, it's just the nature of, of what's going on and nobody's at fault for this lack of communication or for this difficulty with the communication. It, that's something it could be. It could be that somebody is being intentionally and you keep saying, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm just hurt, exhausted and worn out and it's not a problem. And it could actually be like a problem, but it could be the other way too, because there's some way that you're viewing the situation that isn't helpful to you and needs to change. And when you do change that, it's going to change everything. Um, so then we have uh, we have here this queen bee energy. So this can be very nurturing energy, but it's a nurturing that comes with a little bit of a stinger. So this could be, this also seems to reference to me, female sexuality, uh, the reproductive uh, organs, um, and the, um, mm, what do I wanna say? And you know, birds and bees, that kind of thing. Uh, but there's also like some stingers coming in with this honey here. So this could be, I get a very strong female vibe and normally I don't really care about gender with these cards, especially this deck since it's like 80% female. Um, we can't be completely gendering everything, but this is, a, you know, a looming female figure that may, um, have some sting to it, um, but may also be like a source of nurturing. So that's not an uncommon thing. So you're getting something from somebody, but they also are hurting you, um, somehow, uh, that's, that, that can be a very common dynamic, unfortunately, that we have with a lot of our, our people in our lives. Something, something that, that, that can, can help you, can nurture you, can bring you, some good stuff, but, but also there's, there's some pain associated with it too. Um, and then we have house of flowers. So we have this little partnership down here. This is my Jane Eyre card. This, this thing that looks very, um, controlled and, uh, maybe a little bland on the outside just starts popping out in these super exciting ways. This beautiful expression and explosion of, um, of communication and, and beauty and you know it seems like there's just been this like sort of grid like existence um with some uh some bland slightly isolated uh existence here and and something very exciting and, and thrilling comes in and starts blooming and starts growing here um sort of a springtime popping out uncontainable popping out uh, it could be this communication difficulty gets resolved. It could be reframing it allows for new growth and a new a sort of explosion of communication and, and beauty. I want to say this House of Flowers card... Um, it's, it feels... It feels like a Pisces card to me as far as like, um, and emotional. Um, we've got the two pairing, the pair here. I think I know why that, that is. It reminds me, um, of, of a sisterhood or a companionness here. Um, and there's just this this um you know it's the two the two fish going in separate directions um with the pisces so we have this like sort of um and pisces can sort of be a dichotomy thing um 
a dichotomous personality where we have different things going in different directions. So we have this uh, structure here, and then we have this one fish is the structure, and this other fish is this this thing. And then in my moonology deck uh, with the um, Pisces moons, um, there's talking about balancing practicality with spirituality, and I think that's why I'm I'm trying to explore this this sudden feeling I have about this card or this message I'm getting from this card is, is the balancing and um, we're getting this balancing too so perhaps this isn't this could be pain and pleasure balancing that um, and balancing different aspects you know because we have the honey and the stinger um, so there's some some sort of and of course this is Libra we're talking about scales and this is a very Libra card too um, as far as balancing out uh, the pain and and the pleasure the the spirituality and the practicality um, all right so Libra this is your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome. All right. Um, in your recent past, you've closed out a very painful chapter. You felt very stabbed in the back, very wounded. Uh, they ran out of swords, honestly. They stabbed you so much, they ran out of swords. Here you are ending out that closing chapter, closing out that chapter, ending out that painful aspect of your life, reaching for these healing waters. This has happened in your recent past. You've um, closed out a, a very painful chapter here. And thank goodness, I am very happy for you. <laughs> We're having closed that out, finish that off. No more swords. Uh, it's all, maybe no more stingers here. Um, you know, it's all been played out and you've, you've got to the healing waters and you're, you're starting a healing process after this um, very painful, uh, massive amount of wounds. <laughs> Um, in your present situation, you have the Seven of Cups. So this is um, emotionally overwhelmed. Things aren't as they seem. They're, someone's wearing a mask, um, dealing with inner demons. Um, and maybe this is partly because you know you can't see something. There's something you're not seeing. There's something that needs more clarity here. And there's a lack of clarity, and that's pulling out this inner demon who's um, winding his way through your emotional cup. So there's a revealing, a revelation, a new understanding, seeing something for what it is. Um, and there, this is bringing some sort of fraught emotional, um, internal emotional upheaval for you um, as, as you see things more for what they are. And it could be part of this um, dealing with this past situation and tweaking with how you're understanding it and how you're seeing it, doing that little tweak because it's all connected. Um, it could be creating, you know, seeing something more clearly, seeing something, having this unmasking happen and it's creating some sort of emotional upheaval. You're having to deal with an inner demon right now um, that could be part of this, like looking at the past with, but this revealing thing is going to, um, is creating the upset, but hopefully we get this like inner demon out. So in the regular tarot, this deck is, this is about having lots of options, having lots of choices, but this just reads really differently. Um, as far as, um, just, you know, the, the, the choice, some of the choices in that card and the right of weight are hidden and, and masked. And, and it's almost like the correct one is the one that needs to be that the one that's hidden the most is the one that, that you, you need to select. It's shining. It's like, this is the one that you don't know about. Um, and so, but I feel like this is more about like seeing something more clearly, having, seeing something at its core, at its, uh, for what it is and the emotional upheaval that comes with that situation as far as like the new understanding and as far as long as that thing is is hidden from you it's going to be very emotionally overwhelming but as you seek to to see it more clearly seek to pull off the veneer over over the truth here um the, your inner demons are going to settle down a little bit and go back to their little lair um in your inner landscape you're thinking about um, you're thinking about fortune. It's the wheel of fortune. Um, you're hoping it's going to turn. You're hoping for some better luck. Um, you're thinking about luck a lot about, um, how we have, you know, 
this is the the um, wheel of fortune you know the it's the merry-go-round going around and our ponies going up and our ponies going down and um, and every, some people's ponies are up while other people's ponies are down and then we switch is it always even probably not does it always even out over the lifetime probably not <laughs> but um, but we do have these changes of fortune so things that are out of our control that happen to us um, and sort of this this dial twisting I'm seeing a, um, a safe or a lock being being unlocked here. This has a has a strong like lock code lock here, and and getting that code right, and um, getting and something opening up that's been locked to you before. Um, what's at issue is this nine of wands in the upright. It's the wounded warrior. Um, in the reversal, it might just be still dealing with these wounds. Um, you know, you're continuing on despite being wounded. You might be. Um, I don't want to say more wounded than you think, but this was a pretty, pretty gruesome battle here. And you are seeing something um, with this. Um, your mind is is looking at the past and looking at these wounds that you have, but not seeing them um, clearly. And this could still be causing a wound for you. So a wound of your mind, a wound of perception, perhaps, um, that you're still dealing with. So in the reverse, we're talking about uh, Nine of Wands, Wounded Warrior. I mean, in the upright, Nine of Wands, Wounded Warrior. Um, in the reversal, just um, maybe the healing process, maybe not being able to fight at all or, or feeling too exhausted to 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 you know he what he wants is he wants to be medically discharged right and go home but he's got to keep fighting but i don't know that you want to keep fighting or keep um or engage with this uh this battle anymore at all you know even though you might be being called to be the wounded okay you're wounded all right we're all wounded okay um and we keep going on and you may be struggling with wanting to uh, return to battle because um, because you're wounded and you don't really want to <laughs> and and maybe this is why you're thinking about this um, lock being unlocked like this this ability to to want to re-engage or something like that something coming along that that makes you want to re-engage because you you're not very interested this is this is again the wounded warrior a little bit with communication relating um, and just not wanting to re-engage and that's what I'm getting from this card too like um, maybe the circumstances calling for you to head back to the battlefield get back on that horse get back out there and you just are too exhausted and and are not wanting to something's gonna have to happen uh, that's a little outside of your control to get you back in the game I think um, in your environment is this hanged man so things are going on behind the scenes within you and in your life and maybe this is okay I mean we get this in the issue column but it could also be like it's okay because there's a lot going on behind the scenes here in your environment that you're not aware of that you're not seeing um, knots you know when we're untying a knot we're not being really active untying knots and it's not very obvious what we're doing you know we're just like kind of fiddling untying ourselves from the situation so there's something in your environment that's going to be helping you to untie this but it's not very obvious there's something going on that's um not very obvious yet but it is in the purpose of untying you from sort of this um this exhausted state that you appear to be in I like this. This is your to-do list, the napping card. So this is about taking a time out. I mean, he's very faded here. Like, it's not this card. It's not these colors. It's these colors. So there's a lot about, like, you having been through something in the past that's still quite affecting you, um, not feeling like jumping back into any kind of game here, um, work or relationship wise having been wounded by that which was meant to sustain you um, and and then here we have this um, this uh, this napping card it's for the purpose of resurrection but we just have so many um, timeout cards right here 
<laughs> and we can see why. You know, you reached that water and now it's time to let the water do its work, that healing water do its work. Um, this is taking a time out, resting, um, not uh, not jumping back into the battle. I mean, this is someone returned from battle um, who's resting after the war, trying to figure out what his next move is, you know. Um, so four of swords here. So yeah, this is, this is, I mean, just in the Rider Waite, I keep referencing that one today, but on the Rider Waite deck, it's about the, the warrior who built his own coffin before he went off to battle so that his parents wouldn't have to do that. Well, he survives the battle, survives the war, comes back and lays down in the coffin to sort of understand where he's going. So we ha it's a real resurrection after this. It's a real, like thinking about the future, thinking about where you wanna go, maybe, tweaking, you know, dealing with the situation in the past that's been so much on your mind and affecting things, resting, resting time out. So this is the Libra's job for when you get this reading is um, rest, time out, take time out. It's for the purpose of resurrection. You have just been through a battle. You have been through, I mean, this is well acknowledged in this spread. You've been through something very difficult and you do, you know, you're wondering when it's going to change, when it's going to unlock, when you're, when you're, when when it's going to change but for now you're resting you're taking a time out you're napping you're nurturing yourself you're thinking about your future you're processing the past dealing with that um processing you know whatever ptsd you may have gotten from this battle from this difficult time um your possible outcome here is coming into your truth into your power your power so the king of swords and gender is not relevant here of course but so the king of swords is about seeing both sides being very balanced having a grasp of the truth an equal grasp of equal side of the truth having that understanding the queen of swords is about your truth your sword what your truth is what your what you want to communicate and being very focused on that look she's looking inward she's not looking out at the world she's not about what's out there and what everybody thinks and how we can bring it all together she's about this she's about about looking at where her role is, what she wants, um, who she is. She's very focused on her own inner truth and communication um, with herself and clarity, inner clarity. So that's where you're going. You're maybe still a little too tired to jump back in. You might be wanting the tides to turn a little bit, maybe feeling like you'd like that. Um, looking for that, but you're still not ready for it. You still need this rest. You're just super exhausted, um, not really wanting to, to move forward. But we've got this sort of bursting out energy um, that's going to be coming out of this. And I think that that's a little bit this. I mean, she's not bursting out, but she is like, there is something um, beautiful internally that she's gotten to a, a beautiful place internally. So all right, Libra, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, and comments. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, see you next week.